why Lamar Jackson will be an MVP in 2023. First question came from my guy, Kevin. He said, what's up, Engraven buddy? This video link is what I've been talking about. Why get rid of Greg Roman and why Lamar Jackson will be an MVP in 2023? Uh, and the link that he sent was a highlight video of Lamar Jackson versus UNC. Uh, where he had 525 total yards. Oh, back when he was with Louisville. Uh, he had 525 total yards and six touchdowns. Uh, back to the email. He continued. He said, I've been watching Lamar since he was a true freshman at Louisville. Lamar ran a more complex offense in college than all five of the years that he's been in the NFL. Todd Munkin will change that. Lamar Jackson, MVP, 2023. And, hey, I, I, I can't fight you on that. Um, Lamar Jackson, like even last year, Especially before the injuries and stuff. I know there was a point in the season where it got a little shaky. But how he started off. Uh, Lamar Jack, when he plays, he usually always he's in like the, the, the talkings and whatnot for MVP. He's always there. Um, because as we've seen, Lamar does a lot for these Baltimore Ravens. He does a whole lot for these Baltimore Ravens. He does not consistently. Um, so now with the new offense, uh, it is expected to be more pro style. Uh, it, is, it is expected to complement the wide receivers a lot more. It's expected to have a lot more balance, um, a, a lot more just playing off of the positive, like building off of each other, like the, the run building off of the pass, the pass building off of the run. It's supposed to have a lot more chemistry. It's expected to have a lot more of that or, or harmony. Shout out to uh, the homie Sarah Ellison because when we talked about that with her a, a while back, that's the word that she used was harmony. But um, those are the expectations for this top monkey offense with Lamar Jackson and new weapons and whatnot. So I see no reason why he couldn't be right back in the MVP race. Ain't no chance for the man. You too, team, keep it clean. You see my boy, he like got a made it. Got a made it. Boy, that's my homie, ain't that right and graven. Right and graven. Hey, keep it clean. Welcome to another episode of Question from Subs, where you can ask any question you want to. If you want to be a part of it, the Team Keep It Clean patrons, you can send your question directly on Patreon. Uh, if you want to become a Team Keep It Clean patron, you can go to patreon.com slash engravenviz. And for everybody else, you can send your question to teamkeepitclean at gmail.com. Next question came from my guy Anthony. He said, PQ or Oway? Uh-oh, decisions, decisions. Uh, what's going on, Ng? Hope everything is all good. So I'm sure you heard EDC say he wants to keep PQ in Baltimore, which I like him and roll together. I know people will think we drafted Simpson to replace PQ, but what if we do extend PQ and Oway doesn't take a jump this year? I think it's Oway who gets replaced. Whoa, I never thought about that before. And Oway and Bateman got drafted. Was it 2021? Cause this is Bateman's third year, 2021, 2022. Yeah, 2023. This is yeah, this is him and Bateman's third year. So yeah, after this year, they have to decide on both of their fifth year options. Wow. Ooh, I, I didn't think about that at all. Let's keep going though. Mm. He said, uh, I've seen Simpson in college come off the edge a lot and create some plays, and he's very versatile i think simpson has that michael parsons skill set just something i was thinking about and wanted to get your thoughts on trust wow that i never thought about that before but i know Oway has struggled he, uh, and it's just been a bit rough the potential is there but again potential is nothing if you don't tap into it so it's important that this year it's a big year for OA. It's a big, I mean, it's a big year for so many different people on the Ravens. I mean, every year is a big year, really. You can say that every single year. But um, this is huge for Bateman and OA because it's fifth-year option time. It's, it's time for the Ravens to decide on those fifth-year options. Um, and now, just because, say, for instance, they decide, oh, we don't, we're going to decline a fifth-year option of one or the other, it doesn't mean it's over. It doesn't mean it's a wrap. They'll still have another year, if the Ravens kept them at that point, another year to prove themselves and, and, and show out. Then they could get a contract extension a little earlier. So it just because the, a, a fifth-year option is picked up or declined, it doesn't mean, oh, this player is going to stay with the team forever or this player is going to be gone. 
It's just a matter of wait and see what they do on the field. Tempered expectations. Next question came from my boy George. He said, good morning, engraving the team, keep it clean. So now that our most stressful offseason has become one of our best offseasons, it has me thinking about realistic expectations for the upcoming season. Everyone is talking about how this upcoming season is going to be so different than what us fans are used to. And while I agree, I think we need to take a step back and take a look. I feel like next year, not this year, will be our year. Hear me out. Unfortunately, it's going to take some moves as OBJ, Rocky Scene, and a lot of others are either in a contract year or only sign a one-year deal, which I, which I feel could be an issue. With a new coordinator and Tom Monk and his style of play and his new system scheme is going to take time to implement. I think we will be fairly balanced on offense, probably right down the middle, 50-50 pass and rush, but... I'm not expecting chemistry to come overnight, and with a lot of changes to our scheme, I think it's fair to expect a year for everyone to jail and find the chemistry it's going to take to be a legitimate Super Bowl contenders. Now, that that part, um, it is I, I think it's definitely going to be growing pains for the new offense, and it's going to take some time. I don't think a year, like the whole season, and not be written? No, I don't, I don't think it'd take that long. Like, maybe like a couple games or what, and my, maybe a couple get like – I would expect them to get more and more, get better and better as the year goes along, get more and more comfortable and whatnot. Yes, it is a new system, but hey, like this the NFL, baby. You ain't got no no year to get right in, in a new system. You got to get that thing moving, man. So that's why this offseason is of the essence. This obviously the uh, and once they start playing real football, it's going to be important. But no, nah, you, you ain't got a year to do this thing, baby. Anyway, he said, looking at looking back at other teams with these kind of big changes to philosophy, players, and how this team will operate going forward, I believe this year will be good, but will be more of a building and bonding season than a realistic championship run, especially we're looking at all the teams just in the AFC alone who have had time to put it all together. Thanks for what you do and the positive platform you've created for all of us to share in. Hashtag team, keep it clean. Appreciate that, George. Thank you, man. Um, now, one thing with that. That's true. The AFC is loaded. But... Um, with Lamar Jackson, like Ravens can go against anybody, but it's important that it's with Lamar Jackson. So, and with this team, um, yeah, health, health, health has been one of their biggest enemies, man. One of their biggest enemies over the years has been health. That has been the biggest thing. So if they could fix that, and again, they've done different things to work on that, but if they could fix that, they can rock with anybody. They, 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 really, they really can rock with anybody. They can mess with anybody. When I saw this team, very injured team back in, what, 2021? When I saw this team beat the Chiefs, 20, I said, I said what? They, what? Hey, as long as they got, yeah, they can mess with anybody. When I saw this team going to Seattle in 2019, and really beat up on them Seahawks. Ooh, what? This? Oh, all right. Yeah. Okay. And there have been pl plenty of other games you can choose from, too, but they can rock with anybody. Hell, if they have health, they can mess with anybody in the league. They really can. Now, I ain't saying that just because I'm a Ravens fan or whatever, but no. It's true, though. They can mess with anybody. So let's hope that they're healthy. Um, but yeah, chemistry is super important too. I, I, I obviously, as you know, and you you stated in your uh, question, chemistry is super important. But the more you work together, and again, you're gonna go through the mistakes, you're gonna go through the problems, or you're gonna go through that stuff. But as long as you building more than you tearing down, well, not necessarily tearing down, but as long as you building and, and working and succeeding a lot more than you failing, um, that's what's important. Because again, the mistakes are gonna happen. The mistakes are gonna happen. Uh, it's going to be a bad throw here. It's going to be an interception. It's going to be a drop. It's going to be a fumble. It's going to be a sack. It's going to be this, that. It's going to be stuff that's going to happen. But as long as you're working on correcting that stuff, you'll be good to go. Next question came from my guy Everett. He said, what's up, fam? Good to put another question in. How's your cruise going? Hope God gave you back everything you lost and more. Oh, I appreciate that. This, uh, that whole thing was, ooh, it was an experience. That old, the, the demonetization. It, it was rough, and um, I, like I was, I was talking to my mom about it the other day. I was like, "Hey, it's just it's it's a, it's a loss. It it, it, was, it was a big loss, but um, a lot of good came from it, and a lot of good came from it. Um, the way that Team Keep It Clean came together and like really, really supported like crazy. I couldn't believe it, man. Like, cause I knew I knew all of y'all were good people, but I didn't know y'all were like good people like that, like that. 
Um, but that showed me a lot. Uh, it opened my eyes to a lot. and just made me appreciate all of y'all that much more um, because y'all looked out uh, like for real. Um, and as far as the cruise, the cruise was fun. It was nice to get away. And we had, um, we had actually made, we recorded two videos on the cruise. It was seven days. We recorded two videos on there. And there was a time early on, and we recorded those videos like early on in the cruise. Um, but there was a time I was thinking, all right, something happens with the Ravens. I'm going to talk about it. I'll record a video or whatever. But then I was like, hold up. No. I said, no, I'm not doing that. I said, this is going to be a vacation. This is going to, like, I'm going to disconnect from all of that stuff. We ain't going to be on here recording everything that had not, that, all that stuff can wait. It, it can wait. And it did. And it was nice. It was nice to, like, really take a break break uh, from all of this. Because uh, we always talk about it on here. You need breaks from all of that stuff. You got to, yeah, just get away from it sometimes. So it, it was nice. So. And that, that cruise was something that had been planned for a, a long time already. Um, like for, for, yeah, a long time. Uh, wow. Um, but it, it was nice. Like the timing of it was just, everything just worked out, man. And this year has just been crazy. It's, it's been a crazy year. Um, the whole Lamar Jackson interview, that was insane. Um, still got like some more stuff coming up, like real soon. Real soon. Something else crazy coming up real soon. Um, that should be a lot of fun. And maybe Team Keep It Clean can get involved in it and whatnot. We'll see. Uh, but I'll let y'all know uh, once stuff gets more uh, finalized and official and whatnot. But um, stuff is moving, man. Stuff stuff is moving. Stuff is crazy. It's just things are amazing, man. Um, I'm, I'm just really appreciative of everything and, and just everybody involved because it's, it's been a process, man. It's been a big, big, long process, man. So I appreciate y'all. So thank you, man. Anyway, he said, first, are you going to London? I ain't plan on it. But I, I can't say for sure. Most likely not, but probably not. But we'll see. But probably not. But I, I don't know. I don't know. But we'll see. Probably not, though. But anyway, he said, second, how do you feel about the Ravens secondary being tested this year with the corners they have against the cores and star quarterbacks, including rookies, that being Houston, the Colts, Seahawks, Dolphins. Je well, anyway, he named all the teams. So, yeah, hey, they're going to be tested. Because, again, you got Marlon Humphrey. We know what he's going to do. You got Rocket Singh. He should be solid. But then after that, it's like, ooh, you really getting tested. And these quarterbacks are going to find those young guys. They're going to find those inexperienced guys, and they're going to try to attack them like crazy. So we're still wondering if Ravens going to make another move in the secondary. Like he said, third, the player I'm praying makes the 53 is Keaton Mitchell. He's a beast. and reminds me of a Tony Pollard, the Anthony Thomas, Darren Sproles. We could use him in so many, so many packages at halfback, running back, slot, punt return, kick return, at least 15 touches a game. Ooh, that's, that's a lot. That's a lot, especially with everybody else on offense, too. Um, and he said, uh, give him uh, seven punt returns, two to three kick returns, three runs, and about two catching opportunities, 100 Total yards average a game. He has that CJ 2K speed, even between the tackles, finds holes and shoots through. Oh, really? Oh, I ain't know it's like that. Uh, that's gold. Uh, as a back looking at Gus and JK battling for a contract and he'll be in a special team. Mm. Uh, you could have a speed package with him and Zay uh, and Duve on the field, etc. Uh, fourth, at corner, doesn't there need to be at least two more signings unless the youngest really show big dog promise? Not 2021 promise not to get hurt, lol. I think a Peters and William Jackson could. Or would be good overkill. We'll see what Marcus Peters. Hey, maybe by the time we edit this video and put it together, Marcus Peters will have made his decision or some a team will make their decision on him. So we'll see. Um, he said, and last, what's up with Houston and Amos? I would love him to come back home as safety and let Kyle work out on the field like a Holland and Simmons on the Cardinals. Oh, so he could just be everywhere. And so I mean like last year. Like last year, he was a safety, but he was like a slot corner. He was a pass rusher. He was all that stuff. So he's just moving around. I see what you're saying. He said, from our, from our opponents, uh, I'm calling it a great 14-3 and three season. Okay. Lamar MVP, uh, 5,000 yards, 40 touchdowns, 15 interceptions. Okay. Beckham, 110 for 1,212 touchdowns. Whoa. Andrews, 94,000, 10 touchdowns. Okay, I can see that. Bateman for 70 and 800 yards uh, and eight touchdowns. Whoa. Uh, Nelson Aguilar, 60 catches for 600 yards and five touchdowns. Whoa. Zay Flowers, 85 for 1,000 yards and five touchdowns. Whoa. Duvernay, 25 for 250 yards and three touchdowns. Likely 20 for 200 yards and two touchdowns. 460 completions equals 27 completions a game. 
Oh, and about on about thirty to five to thirty eight passing attempts a game. Oh, okay, okay. See when you when you put the numbers when I'm reading the numbers, it's like whoa. But then you break it down like that. It's, oh, okay, I see. Yeah, and my games I want to see is the London game. 49ers is hopefully Christmas night. It is. It's on Monday Night Football on, on the 25th. And he said, and I hope the Miami and Seahawks games are night games in Baltimore. The Miami game is, I think it's a 1 p.m. game on December 31st in Baltimore. But the Seahawks game, I don't think that's a night game. Uh, he said, that's my time, Brody. Sorry for the long one. Appreciate you, man. Next question came from Den. He said, hey, Engraven, hope this reaches you while you and the family are in excellent health, both physically and mentally. I would have added financially in that too. However, now that you two stop acting like... <laughs> now that you two stop acting like the EDC and run that money, I'm sure you're doing well in that area now. Uh, Engraven, with the media dislike of Lamar Jackson, especially with him not using an agent... To do his contract, do you really realize that they have nothing negative to say about the contract except that he didn't get a fully guaranteed deal? Mm. There's always going to be some somebody to say something negative about it, of course. But, yeah, that's one of the only things that they can hold on to. Ah, see, he didn't get his fully guaranteed money like he wanted. But with that, and I know some Ravens fans have done that too. Like, oh, yeah, he didn't get it fully guaranteed. My thing is, all right, he didn't get fully guaranteed. Um, But it's like... When it comes to negotiations, you don't aim low. You, you're supposed to aim high. And then when uh, you settle for less than you aim, than you were aiming for, and you get that. It's like it's, it's a win. But it, it worked out for both sides for sure, man. The Ravens ain't had to pay fully guaranteed. But Lamar, he got to become the highest paid, got a lot of bread, and, and now they, they locked in. So it worked. But anyway, he said it. If this deal was not an exceptional deal, they would have been ripping him all over the place. But now that he has shown that he is more than competent, everyone stays silent. The struggle of a young black man. Mm. Yeah, this um, you, you know that there have been plenty of people just ripping him to shreds over the years. Not year, but years. Not off season, but off seasons. Hey, you need to get an agent. He needs to get an agent. He doesn't understand how these contracts work. He doesn't know what he's doing. He doesn't know how to negotiate. His mom doesn't know what she's doing. She doesn't have any credentials, this, that, and a third. And they got it done. So, yeah, what are they going to say now? And the last question on this episode of Question from Subs came from my guy, Rodell. He said, no disrespect with all due respect. My guy, not trying to be that guy and not trying to throw shade. I repeat, not trying to be that guy and not trying to throw shade. But on this lovely afternoon in Baltimore, I just had a random thought pop in my head and wanted to see what you thought. Uh oh, okay. He said, now, essentially, Lamar Jackson has been here and started for three and a half years. Having an MVP as a quarterback was something that we've never could have imagined uh, and something unheard of in Baltimore. With that being said, that award was essentially four years ago. This is a what have you done for me lately league. And as I look back in history, was Flacco's start better than Lamar Jackson's? Well, before I read the rest of this email, if we're talking about individually, no. Team wise, yeah. Of course. They win the playoffs every year. They won playoff games every year. Then they got the AFC championships. Then they end up winning the Super Bowl. So, yeah, Flacco started team wise was better than Lamar Jackson's. Individually, though, no. Well, if you if you go individually, like him as a quarterback, well, as a quarterback, when when I mean QB wins are a stat, right? So QB wins, the playoff wins. Yeah. If we're talking playoffs, yes. Flacco's start was better than Lamar Jackson's, obviously, because they won, and he he really started turning on in the playoffs a lot. Well, it took him a little bit, but once he started turning on in the playoffs, he started turning it on. It was good to go. Uh, if we talk in regular season, then it's it's Lamar all day. So yeah, that that's and, and that's real. So now we just what we waiting on now is for Lamar and them to turn that corner in the playoffs, and Lamar's shown that. He's going to show up in a playoff. He's going to make stuff happen. But this is where now, now we need more of a team effort, too. We need more of that. And another part of that is the playmakers, too. You see, with Flacco, um, in, especially in the playoffs, you know, he, Flacco was weird, man. Because in regular season, Flacco, be, oh, he get through. Do, 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 do. But in the playoffs, he turned to a different animal. Um, but something that helped Flacco big time, as you all know, and it helped him get a Super Bowl, a Super Bowl MVP and all that. Ravens, they drafted Torrey Smith. 
Torrey Smith in the second round of uh, the 2011 draft. Pretty sure from Maryland. Deep threat wide receiver. Big play guy. Drew a lot of pass interferences. Great. But they traded for Anquan Bolden. They traded for Anquan Bolden. They also signed Jacoby Jones. Um, and in the 2012, all of those things were together. And you still had Dennis Pitt and Ed Dixon. So you had a really good tight end. Actually, Ed Dixon used to be better than Dennis Pitt, but then I forgot what happened. They ended up switching. Dennis Pitt took off, and the rest was history. Um, but you had a good tight end, solid backup tight end. You had multiple good running backs. So, I mean, sort of like the Ravens kind of got now. I mean, you ain't got no Anquan Bolden on the team, but you got you got some weapons in place now. So the Ravens for Flacco, they start putting everything all together. And it was no coincidence that when they really when they really start putting because they had the defenses. Remember? They had the defenses. They had the good defenses before. But then they they started really putting it all together on offense. And co coincidentally, was it a coincidence? I don't know. But coincidentally. That's when they end up winning the Super Bowl under Flacco, when they put it all together, all together. So hopefully with it being put all together for Lamar, um, they can do the same thing. They can do the same thing. And a lot, of that, a lot of that is on Lamar too, obviously. A big part of Lamar, Lamar's missed some time. He's missed time last year, missed time the previous year. That's important too, just being there for the stretch. That's super important because it, without Lamar – this team ain't going nowhere, as we know. But it's important that he's there for the stretch. And now he, it's like he got weapons. He got some weapons. Got some decent weapons now. It's like, okay. Got a new offense. So, again, like we talked about earlier, it's going to take some time to get adjusted. But once they start rolling, they should be rolling. And then, especially by the end of the season, especially come playoff time, they should definitely be clicking a lot more. They should be flowing by then. So, okay, the, 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 the potential is there. It's a matter of Ravens getting it. Yeah, but let's let's continue. So I went off on a little tangent. Anyway, he said, ironically, both QBs dealt with great defenses, great tight ends, great running backs, and disgusting wide receivers, goodwill wide receivers, free agent leftovers, and just disappointing draft selections were thrown out on game day as both QBs wide receiver room. Here's how the QBs compared. Flacco won a division twice in his first four years, 2011-2012. Lamar won a division twice his first four years, 2008-2019. Excuse me, 2018, 2019. Uh, Flacco made the playoffs every year his first four years and won at least one game every year. He made the conference championship in two out of his first three years and in year four won the Super Bowl. No, it was year five. Yeah, it was year five. Yeah. Uh, his playoff record in his first four years was nine and four, which is including the epic Super Bowl run. I feel like some of those numbers might be a little. But, yeah, his Super Bowl was year five. Because, well, wait a minute. Yeah, 2008 to 2009. 2009 and 10, 10 and 11, 11, 12, 12 and 13. Yeah, year five. Anyway, uh, he said Lamar Jackson made the playoffs every year in his first three years. Tyler Huntley, year four. He didn't get a win until his third playoff appearance. His fourth playoff appearance, he wasn't available. His playoff record to date is one in three, not including the Tyler Huntley's 2023 playoff loss. Flacco completed two, 207 passes out of 373 attempts in his four years in the playoffs, posted 2,672 yards, 19 touchdowns, and eight interceptions, and again, ultimately won the Super Bowl and became the Super Bowl MVP. Lamar completed 76 out of 136 attempts in his three playoff appearances, posted 900 yards, three touchdowns, and five interceptions, and again, LJ has a regular season MVP. All in all, obvious roster construction, coaching, opponents, and a boatload of other variables can come into play. However, when you line them up toe-to-toe, -to -toe, just like we praise LJ and give him a standing ovation for essentially all of Baltimore's success, Ooh, excuse me. We can look back at what Flacco accomplished when it mattered most and wonder why the shortcomings for Lamar Jackson. A regular season MVP and a boatload of regular season wins or en enough regular season wins with great playoff performances and a Super Bowl with a Super Bowl MVP. While we can hope for both, yes, that's what we're hoping for. But again, you got a regular season MVP. Okay, cool. Nice. Let's go get that other MVP, the one that comes in the postseason. When you win that Super Bowl, that would, that would be a beautiful thing. But anyway, he said, um, while we can hope for both. Um, oh, there it goes. Lamar is a, I, I lost my place, as y'all can tell. Uh, while we can hope for both, Lamar is a better talent overall than Flacco, meaning he has to prove himself when it matters most, which Flacco was able to do. And there it goes, yeah. And that's what, that's, that's what we're waiting on there. We're waiting on that turn in the playoff time. We're waiting for the Ravens to, to hit, that, hit that switch. 
come playoff time. And again, the, the, the potential is there. But now Lamar just got to be there for it because he wasn't there for the playoffs last year, obviously. Uh, and then he had him in position before, the year before, but then uh, he ended up getting hurt. So it's unfortunate, man. But that's why I said Lamar's there. They can rock with anybody. But health is wealth. Health is wealth. Um, if you make it in the playoffs, you got a shot. Anybody got a shot, you got a shot. And like we always say, Ravens can mess with anybody. But health is wealth. So being, being there, that's the first part. And then just making it happen. So the Ravens paid Lamar Jackson that money because they feel like he can make it happen. They went out and got some other pieces because they feel like he can make it happen. I feel like he can make it happen. Again, biggest, biggest enemy for the Ravens, biggest enemy for Lamar Jackson. It's been health. That's been the biggest enemy. So Ravens conquer that. Lamar Jackson conquers that. And his receivers conquer that. I mean, that, the, the receiver issue, that that been a big enemy too. <laughs> it's like, woo, and that's been a Raven thing for a long time. Like you mentioned, it's been a Raven thing with Joe Flacco too a lot of times. But it's like when, when they, again, when, when they surrounded Flacco with the best at wide receiver, when they re like really put their best foot forward at wide receiver for Flacco, it changed everything. Changed everything. Now, the way they did it for Flacco, they, they did it before his rookie contract was up. I just wish, again, I wish they would have done that for Lamar. I wish, I really wish, I really wish. But y'all know the rest of that story. But we're here now. We're here now. So let's see how these Ravens do. Let's see how Lamar does. And let's hope that, again, he can add another MVP. But this time, not a regular season MVP, but a Super Bowl MVP to his trophy case. <laughs> Challenging Madden. Ha. Let's go. Make him rage quit. Exit out the door. Exit out the door. 